Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna talk about Ryzen second generation IPC versus first generation IPC. Now, for those of you that don't already know, IPC, when we're talking about processors, just means instructions per clock. So how many instructions can we run through per clock cycle? Now, to test this, it's actually pretty straightforward, at least the methodology that I'm using. I'm just gonna be using Cinebench, the single threaded uh, benchmark that's on there. And I'm gonna be running both the Ryzen 5 2600 and the Ryzen 7 1800X single threaded at 3.9 gigahertz. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw the uh, 2600 to 4.1 gigahertz and run the single threaded test again, just to see what type of single threaded performance we can get at the maximum stable clock with the overclock. Now the reasons I picked 3.9 gigahertz and 4.1 gigahertz with the 1800X and 2600 is simply because with the first generation Ryzen chips, um, at least in all the chips that I tested, and I tested quite a few, I have um, a couple Ryzen 5 processors, a Ryzen 3 processor, I have a Ryzen 7 processor. Basically 3.9 gigahertz was a safe uh, clock speed that I could get to with pretty much all of my Ryzen chips. As soon as I went any above that, then I started to have some issues, especially with my Ryzen 5 1600, as well as my Ryzen 5 2400G, and maybe even the 2200G, I can't remember off the top of my head, but basically that was the uh, highest stable clock that I could find on basically every Ryzen processor. And then the reason I'm using 4.1 gigahertz for the 2600 is I had no problem at all getting to 4.1 gigahertz. Getting above that though was a bit of an issue and I really feel like 4.1 gigahertz is a good sort of target zone for pretty much all of the second generation Ryzen chips, especially considering mine is a non-X variant. I figure if you have an X variant, you should have no trouble at all, at least as long as you have decent cooling, getting to that 4.1 gigahertz mark. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results and then I'll give you some wrap up thoughts at the end. Now to hop into the numbers here really quick and to elaborate a little bit more on my methodology, I'm using the average of three single threaded runs in Cinebench R15 for these numbers. And starting out with the 1800X at 3.9, we see that the raw score is 158 compared to 162 with the 2600 at 3.9 gigahertz. And then when I am using the 2600 at 4.1 gigahertz, we jump all the way up to 170 for that score. Now using the 1800 X as the baseline, we see that the 2600 gets 103% of the original score with it running at 3.9 gigahertz and running at 4.1 gigahertz, the 2600 is actually able to hit 108% of that original 1800X score. So if you're willing to overclock or just utilizing XFR, uh, you can actually get about an 8% jump in single threaded performance over the original 1800X. Now, obviously, if you're not overclocking the 1800X, you may actually see a little bit better single threaded performance because using XFR again, the 1800X will run a single core at more like four gigahertz, maybe even 4.1 gigahertz. So you may see that score actually come up a little bit if you're not overclocking your 1800X. But because I use a heavily multi-threaded workload, I do overclock my 1800X, and I think a lot of gamers probably will be overclocking their 1800Xs anyways, if that's the chip you're using, or your 1700X, 1700, or whatever other Ryzen chip you're using. So it is a little bit of a trade-off with overclocking, especially on the first generation, because of how XFR works. So do be aware that your mileage may vary on these numbers a little bit. So obviously that IPC difference is about what I expected at 3% based on other reviews from other YouTubers that I had seen. 3% was about in the range uh, that the second generation Ryzen chips should be outperforming the original Ryzen chips. Uh, that's of course if you're using the exact same clock speed. Now obviously if you bump up the clock, which you do have the ability of doing with the second generation Ryzen chips, you can get a bit more performance on top of that. Now a lot of uh, applications, you won't really notice that performance difference and if that's the case, you may actually still be better off saving some money and getting some first generation Ryzen chips depending on what that price differential is. If on the other hand you do make use of applications that are very single threaded heavy or especially gamers, which can definitely benefit from better single threaded performance as well as those better clock speeds that you'll see on the second generation side, you may as well go ahead and get these second generation chips just because the price differential isn't huge. And if you're a gamer, especially, like I said, 
uh, you will benefit from those higher clock speeds and slightly higher IPC. And if you're building a new system anyways, hey, you might as well go ahead and get the best that's out there for the money that you can afford. But of course, if you're already on the first generation Ryzen platform, I don't know that this is a big enough of a jump for you to really justify spending the extra couple hundred dollars, depending on which processor you're getting, to upgrade to second generation Ryzen. In fact, I think it's very fair to say that the vast majority of everyone should not make that upgrade. If you are definitely wanting to upgrade your processor in the future, I would wait for the Zen 2 architecture instead of just uh, the refinement, which is the Zen Plus architecture, which is what the second generation Ryzen chips are. The third generation Ryzen chips will be on Zen 2, which is another new architecture, which should give you a significantly better bump in performance than the Zen Plus architecture. So of course, this is where I kick it back to you. What do you think about these results? And if you're already on the first generation Ryzen, are you waiting or are you gonna upgrade now? Let me know down below. And of course, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. Those things always help out. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.